Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at some books. So the format of this video is very, very different from my other video because I actually have both of my hands and that makes it so much easier for me to review books. So hopefully I will be making more videos like this. So I recently did a stream, a live stream, and I was using this exact setup and my live stream froze. It has to do with a technical difficulty that I'm still trying to resolve. So hopefully this video doesn't freeze. But this, for all practical purposes, is a live video. Basically, I'm going to record this and either stream the recording or play as a premiere so that there's chat. So if you're watching this during the live stream or premiere, whichever one I choose to go with, just know that I am reading the chat and I will communicate in chat as the video uh, progresses. So I picked these books because these books are awesome and I feel that everyone will get something from these books. You probably know someone, whether it's you or someone else, who can benefit from one of these books. These are kind of like math books for everyone. They really, really are because I think most people will find use in at least one of these books, even if you don't have a math background. Let's start with perhaps uh, this one here in the middle. So there's two books here actually. This is the first edition. I bought this one and I made a video on it and the video did pretty good. I think it got over 100,000 views and apparently I got the attention of Thomas Garrity or perhaps the publishing company because they contacted me and uh, they sent me a, the new edition of the book, which was really cool. And uh, they asked they asked me if I wanted to interview Thomas Garrity. So I said yes, it was my first interview ever here on YouTube. And uh, yeah, amazing, amazing human being, amazing mathematician, amazing teacher. This is an amazing book. So let me show you what this book is about and why it's so great. So first, the target audience here says, all the math you missed but need to know for grad school. So it's written for students who are going to graduate school, okay? And they want to know what they need to know in order to prepare. This has more than enough information. So if you're thinking about going to grad school and you open this book and you don't know all this stuff, don't worry, don't feel bad, don't feel defeated, it's normal. I did not know all of this stuff when I went to grad school. It's quite a bit of stuff. So what this book does is it gives you an overview of, I don't wanna say all of mathematics, cause that's not possible, but a lot of mathematics. But you see, it starts with linear algebra, real analysis, look at all those topics, tons of topics. And then uh, you see there's little subsections for each topic. Now, some people ask, can you use this book to learn math? Sure, yeah, but you're not gonna become a master at everything with just one book. It's, it's not really possible. What this book does is it opens the door for more exploration. It really will pique your interest in mathematics. So if you're interested in mathematics and you have some mathematics background, it's worth picking up. A lot of the stuff you won't understand, and I'll show you why in a minute, because you have to have some background. But if you know some math, you can understand most of it. So let me just show you the main layout of the book. For example, this is three. This is really cool. Look, calculus for vector valued functions. The basic object is Rn. And then you see the basic map, differentiable functions from Rn into Rn, into Rm. Yep, couldn't see it. That's an M. Basic goal, the inverse function theorem. And so Garrity does that throughout the book. He basically has that layout in each section, which I think is really cool. Let's look at this one. I think this is the one on topology. Yeah, point set topology. Basic map, topological spaces. Sorry, basic object, topological spaces. Basic map, continuous functions. Yeah, cool. I'm looking at my screen as I film this because this is actually projecting onto my computer. It's my, my, uh, my live stream uh, setup. That's why the mic sounds uh, better, hopefully, than my regular mic that I have. Classical Stokes theorems. So basic object, manifolds and boundaries, basic map, vector valued functions on manifolds, basic goal, average of a function over a boundary or average of a derivative over an interior. So wonderful book. I just got to give it a whiff. Just got to bring it closer to my nose. Ah, oh, wonderful book. Highly recommend it. It's, it's, it's heavy too. It's thick. So it's well made. They did a good job. Um, the publishing company, I believe, I should know this because they emailed me. It's Cambridge University Press. Yeah, they did a really good job. Even though it's a paperback, pages are good quality and like it's heavy. This is like a really heavy paperback. It just feels really well made. So good work there with, with the publishing. I do wish there was a hardcover. I have come to appreciate soft covers more. 
And the reason is actually in this video. It's this. This book has made me appreciate soft cover books a little bit more because this book I laid in bed and read when I first got it and I loved it. So people kept leaving comments about um, this book. They said, hey, you know, have you have you looked at the Velman book? You should check out the Velman book. And I think it was because I had talked about another proof writing book. I don't recall which one, but it, it just seemed like there was a lot of interest in this book. And so I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and buy it. I bought the book and I didn't really want to buy it, I guess, because at the time I wasn't really buying a lot of books I, or I had just bought a bunch and I was like, oh, I've already spent too much money. So I bought the book and it wasn't super inexpensive. By the way, I'll leave links to all of these in the description, but it wasn't super expensive either. So I bought it and I thought, oh, another proof writing book. You know, I've seen a lot of these and I was blown away. I feel like Velman does an exceptional job at explaining things or trying to explain things, right? Whether or not he explains it depends on whether or not you understand it, right? So if you read someone's explanation, if you understand it, then it's a good explanation for you. If you don't understand it, then it's not really a good explanation for you. So for example, when he talks about vacuous truth, he explains it multiple ways. So what is a vacuous truth? Let me just tell you. Let's just say I say that all, uh, let's see, um, all dragons like pepperoni pizza. Okay, all dragons like pepperoni pizza. So that's true. Mathematically, that's a true statement, okay, in math. In the real world, right, unfortunately, there are no dragons, unless, of course, uh, well, I don't know, I was going to say something silly about being a math sorcerer, but let me not, let's stick to math. <laughs> so, right, so it's true because there are no dragons. Or if you say, you know, all people who can fly love hamburgers, right? That's a vacuous truth because there are no people that can fly, right? People don't have wings. They're not birds. They can't fly. So vacuous truths are statements that are true, even though they really shouldn't be true. And in the world of mathematics, they're true, which is kind of interesting, right? Because, you know, a lot of times people think that math is discovered. It is, but at the same time, it's created. And that's always a big debate. I think some of it is created and some of it is discovered. It's weird how math shows up in different areas in the world. Let me show you where he talks about the vacuous truth stuff so you can see mathematically why that's the case. So page 68, let's take a look at it. For example, if a kid says, I ate all the vegetables on my plate and he has no vegetables on his plate, it's a true statement. In the real world, it's false. In mathematics, it's true. So here, here he explains, he goes through the explanation of you know why um, mathematically it's true and it has to do I won't go through it in detail because I want to read all this to you but basically it has to do with logic with mathematical logic which is the foundation of mathematics right logic and he takes that approach throughout the entire book which is super important when you're learning to write proofs you have to understand logic you have to know how to negate the definition of you know uniform continuity or you know convergence of an infinite series you, you know, you really have to know your stuff. And so this gives you a really good grounding in mathematical logic. The book has a lot of really good examples. So I feel like he does well with the examples. Um, there's, there's good sample proofs. It's a smaller book. It is a soft cover, but it's a nice book for like bedtime reading. I think this is good for anyone who wants to learn to write proofs, um, anyone interested in math. This book is easier to read than this one. This one has a lot more math and a lot of it might seem more high level. Um, I like this book better. Whoops, move my camera there. I like this book better because it's more interesting to me because it has more topics. Whereas this, you know, I, I have a bunch of proof writing books already. This has some interesting stuff that is a little more interesting, but good book for learning to write proofs. This last book, which I wanted to show you in this video, is the one by Erwin Kreisig. And this is a good book for anyone who likes math or physics or engineering. So it's called, yeah, Advanced Engineering Mathematics. It's got a lot of applied math in it. Let's take a look at it. I'm just going to pick it up here. The camera hasn't frozen. That's really, really good. See if hopefully I can make it through this whole video. <laughs> so look how thick that is. I'll leave links to all of these in the description. This one's more expensive, unfortunately. So this one cost a little bit more. It's a really big book. Kreisig has another really good book on functional analysis. So uh, it's, in my opinion, his functional analysis book is the easiest functional analysis book ever written. There's the previous owner. 
and yeah, wow. Wow, Advanced Engineering Mathematics. This is the second edition. This is one of those books that other people buy besides math people. Like engineering students will buy this book or like physics people will buy this book. I feel like I knew someone who was taking a course who had this book. And let me just show you the topics because that's, that's really the interesting part about this book. So let's look at the topics. Review of some topics from algebra and calculus. Okay, so look at that. Elementary functions, partial derivatives, second and third order determinants, complex numbers, polar form of complex numbers, and then ordinary differential equations of the first order. So if you take a DE class, uh, undergraduate differential equations class, you learn all these things. So it, so it covers pretty much the really important stuff in differential equations, right? And then look, more differential equations. Looks like Okay, higher order stuff. Okay, homogeneous linear equations of the second order. Probably some variation of parameters in there. I'm thinking I don't see it yet. Yeah, I'm sure it's there. Yeah, double roots. Non okay, non-homogeneous linear equations. Maybe it's there. Electric circuits. Power series methods. Laplace transforms. Vector analysis. So Okay, so you've just gone through and you've learned differential equations with this book. Now you've got vector analysis here, right? So you got some vector calculus. These are topics that will show up in a Calc 3 class. So if you ever take Calculus 3, you'll see some of these things. So this will help you for a differential equations class. It'll help you for a Calc 3 class. Here's more Calc 3, line integrals, surface integrals, triple integrals, Stokes theorem. Then you've got some matrices and determinants. So you've got linear algebra in this book. I mean, completely ridiculous. Just insane, what a great book. Yeah, look at that. And then Fourier series and integrals. Something you might see in an applied math class or in a partial differential equations class. And then partial differential equations right after that. Well placed, Mr. Kreisig. What a legendary book. Then complex analytic functions. So if you took a course on complex analysis or complex variables, you would learn these things. So, I mean, just tons of stuff. Conformal mapping. Complex integrals, that's also something you study in complex variables. Sequences and series, that's Calc 2 stuff. Taylor and Laurent series. Integration by method of residue, it's more complex variables. Complex analytic functions and potential theory. Special functions, gamma and beta. And then probability and statistics, right? <laughs> He's like, you know what, let's, let's throw in some probability and statistics in chapter 18, just for good measure. Let's just throw some in there. Uh, because we're awesome. I mean, insane. And then it has answers, right? It actually has answers to the odd-numbered problems. Let's just take a look at that. I actually have two copies of this book. Yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool book. I just got to give it a whiff. I'm just going to move it out of the camera here because I got to smell it. Just, just. Oh, it smells so good. What an amazing book. So the contents are awesome. The price is not. It's expensive. But honestly, it's crazy. I mean... This book has so much math. I always think that math books are priceless. I really do because I collect them. So as a collector of things, that's just that's just how I am. But yeah, I mean, very, very clean layout. Let's just open it to a random page. Theoretical basis of the power series method. Okay, this is cool. Oh, this is cool. This is something you might have seen before. Determine the radius of convergence of the following series. So if you're wondering why it's called the radius of convergence, so here, when you find, well, when you find the interval of convergence, if you were to find that uh, for these series, it's an interval, right? So it's a subset of, you know, the real line, right? Like, you know, one to infinity or zero to infinity. So why, why is there a radius or one to three? So why is it called radius? It's because if these were complex variables, like if X was a complex number, instead of an interval, it would be like a circle. It would be a disk. And um, the radius is the radius of the circle of that disk, right? So, you know, a disk is, you have an open disk or a closed disk. Uh, an open disk is basically a circle with dots and then everything inside is shaded. So, there's an actual radius there, and that's why it's called radius. But when you study calculus, it's not an actual radius, but they still call it radius. So it's because of complex numbers, so kind of random. These problems are really long. When you start um, solving um, differential equations with power series, they can get pretty insane. So 
yeah, pretty cool book. Yeah, I just like it a lot because it has so much math. And, you know, what you can do with this, you know, how do you use this book? You can use it as a reference, but you can also use it another way, right? Like, let's say it's raining outside or you just, you just want to be away from people or you just want to, like, study alone. You can take this book and you can do the following. I'll just show you. Like, you can open it up and say, hey, you know, I really don't know that much about, you know, um, probability, page 748. Let's go to page 748 and let's take a look at that because I took a stats course, but like, you know, we used some software. We really didn't learn much. And that that's, you might've learned the concepts, but maybe you didn't learn how to do it by hand, right? You say, hey, let's go to probability. The concepts actually are harder. I think the, the conceptual stuff and statistics is is really tough. But here it talks about probability, right? And then it talks here, here they give you the axioms, the axioms of mathematical probability, right? So you study this in college if you take a course on probability. I took uh, a course called Statistical Theory, and it was extremely hard. The prereq was like the full calculus sequence in a proof writing course, I think, and it was so hard. And we did stuff like this. We had to do proofs. Very, very tough when you're learning. So. This book would help you if you took a course like that as well. So differential equations, mathematical statistics and probability, complex variables. Um, it's got a lot of multivariable calculus, a lot of stuff with series. Incredible book. So this is a book that's good for anyone who wants a solid math book. Like this, this book has more material than the other ones that I've shown you. So let me just show you the other books one more time. So this is the good, a good one for proof writing. Um, totally recommended for proof writing. You want to learn how to write proofs. That's important. You need to know how to write proofs before you jump into higher level math. Like a lot of the math in the Kreisig book is going to require proof writing. Likewise, a lot of the math in this book is going to require proof writing. So in some sense, this is the most elementary of the three. This book just gives you an overview of various topics in mathematics, which is really cool. There's more topics in this book than in this book. And he does do some math and, you know, there's, there's some serious mathematics in this book. Uh, but it just gives you an overview. And honestly, that's quite challenging to do that. So I think it's really impressive that, you know, Thomas Garrity uh, did that. So this is this book is going to live on forever. It really is. I think years from now, people will be looking at this book and be like, oh, yeah, the Garrity book. I mean, I just feel so lucky I was able to, like, you know, make a video with him and stuff. And this book is legendary already. This book has been around for a long time, and it covers way more math. Um, just a good reference. A lot of physics people are into this book. Anyways, the video is getting a little bit long. We're at 18 minutes now. I can actually see the time because of my recording setup, but I just wanted to show you math books that I think are for everyone. And hopefully uh, I post this video and it doesn't freeze before I end the video. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, let me know. Like, did you like this format? Did you Do you like the other format? Um, I think the sound quality is better in this video because I'm using my like my streaming setup, which randomly freezes. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've learned about some, you know, some really cool books. All of them are awesome. That's why I have them. It's funny. I have two copies of this one and two copies of this one. Until next time, good luck and take care.